So I've got the apple II kind of pushed back out of the way here. Give me a little bit of room here to work on the bench. We've got one of the drives from the previous video that made a horrible sound, and we'll flip it on here. So you can hear the sound. I've got the uh, latch open, so we know that sound isn't the spindle, perhaps. And it does sound like it's coming from someplace down here in the base of the drive. So let's open it up and see if we can figure out what it is and maybe correct it. So I'm standing up to get a screwdriver, sorry. So the Apple II is off at the moment, as it should be. I uh, left the Apple II Plus up overnight. I'm running a little graphics program I wrote in Apple Basic, just as kind of a, an additional burn in. And it ran successfully overnight. So we did do a, a quick teardown of this drive earlier. Uh, in a previous video, and just took a look inside. As you can see, there's been something spilled onto it here. Let's go ahead and remove the drive mechanism. To do this, we need to release the drive cable, which in this case is caught under this little latch. So we're going to pull the uh, drive off the lower mounting plate, assuming I can get those really rusted out screws over there out. And of course, all this hardware needs to be cleaned. That's rusty down all the way into the threads. I don't know how much you can see of that, but the uh, corrosion's all the way down into the threads. No surprise, whatever this was back here. This is the one I'm worried the most about. And the screw head just plain fell apart. So this might be. Candidate to be drilled out. Uh, we can try a couple of different screwdrivers here. I don't know if any of these are going to be able to get enough of a bite to break that one loose. I'll grab the screwdrivers off the. Yeah, I didn't think so. Nope. Wonderful. So I am going to have to drill that screw head out of there. Uh, shoot. There's just not a lot of choice here. I don't have really any other thing, any other way of getting a bite down in there. It's going to be sufficient to actually break it loose. Stop the video here. I'll go grab the drill and we'll see about drilling that screw head out of there. So uh, I've got the drill here. I've got a bit, maybe a little small for this. We'll find out. I've got some plastic here to just catch any metal shards that might come up. We need to be somewhat careful here. progress. I should be able to drill down far enough to release the head without damaging the uh, actual metal on the case too bad. In this case it's just slow and steady. Definitely got part of the screw head right there. Is that enough that I can walk that off of there? I have to go a 
little bit deeper. There it is. Not the best way to do that. I did damage. Oh, no, I really didn't. I thought I damaged the uh, case bottom here. I chewed into it a little tiny bit. And that was really enough to uh, enough to get this loose. Uh, I'll have to think about whether I want to try to remove that screw or not there or not. It's not critical to the operation of the drive. The next thing here is to get rid of, of as much of the little bits of metal that came off as possible, which are just kind of scattered all over the plastic. I don't know that you can see them. But this is the reason I actually put this in there, to keep those little bits of rusted metal from making their way uh, up to the... Uh, system board so let me uh, hook this back up I did unhook the drive completely just as kind of a safety precaution uh, I don't think that would have produced any static especially sitting on a static surface but just in case well, let's see what happens so it already sounds much better so first thing I noticed when I got in here is the spindle's incredibly loose and the bell isn't really running true to the spindle. And I think that's because the spindle is so loose with that drive shaft. And I don't believe that should be that loose makes me think maybe this drive was dropped hard perhaps powers off let's go ahead and tear this down a little further let's see if we can figure out what's up back there So I'm going to go ahead and pull this door mechanism off, or the latch mechanism here. I think I can do it without pulling the front off the drive, though I'm not sure of that. don't honestly remember. I know there's a pin that this rides on. Yeah, that's what I thought. It lifts out like that pretty simply. Just dropped a piece of uh, Loctite down into the drive. Well, there's your problem. Now, how is that spindle set on the shaft? Let me remove the drive belt. I suspect that'll just pull straight out of there. I was hoping to see a set screw on here, rather than it just being a pressure fit. And it is just a pressure fit. Oh, interesting. Both sides of it are just a pressure fit. Which kind of makes me think that's how it was designed. So I just knocked the bearing out of the bottom here. bit of play in that which is fine we don't want it too tight that may be all it's taken to uh, bring this drive back to life let me 
the uh, get the belt back on. And there it is. Put everything back together. So when the drive was flipped over this way, the shaft was dropping down. This was rubbing in the base plate here, although you really it didn't leave any marks. I guess it wasn't left running long enough. My guess is this drive was dropped bottom to its bottom at some point. And the mass little flywheel here just kind of jarred loose. Uh, I'm not going to worry about like lock tightening that. It's just obvious looking at it, it was just a pressure fit from the factory. So I think I'm going to call that okay at this point. And we will uh, put the drive back together. There's two plastic ears here on the handle that go into slots here. Of course, you've you got to fold it the right direction to do that, but go into those two slots. This arm, it's got the felt pad on it, it needs to be on top here, so that when you close the door, it's dropped down onto the head. When you open the door, it's lifted up off. This was this screw and this screw. I want to get these started. not a lot of play in this and you can see that the shaft here on the uh, nylon part that drops down in kind of floats around and actually while well, I got this apart let's back out and take a look at something the bearings on the uh, oops the bearings on there felt okay and this spins nice and free too isn't making an excessive amount of noise, so I think it's okay as well. So I think we are good to just get this all lined back up and into place. If the uh, nylon piece on the top there was re really sticky, didn't spin well, I would pull the little C-clip off and see if perhaps I could get a little bit of lubricant down in there. I'm still really confused by reading that you shouldn't lubricate the slides here, or the slides, yeah there's two of them. Really confused by that unless maybe it'll attack the plastic here. That plastic actually floats on there. back in if I can find it that is the screw if I can get it to line up here Emphasize if you end up drilling out a screw head like that, make sure you get something in place to capture the little bits of metal that are drilled out. Uh, in that case, it produced a lot of, of little rust chips. Oh, that was not good. And uh, little cuttings out of the screw head. You saw me go really slow and just kind of pulse the drill, pulse the drill. I didn't want to create a lot of heat. Whether that's the, the best method, I don't know, but that's the method I've used in the past. And I've always ultimately been successful with it. Don't you want to go on? There you go. Get the actual drive 
motors, etc., connected. The controller cards in the machine, everything's hooked back up. That sounds tremendously better. So, the other thing to talk about here, and I don't think the camera's going to pick this up, but I'll pick it up here for a second, is in this bottom flywheel, let's turn the power off so you can see, it says 60 and 50, and there's a set of black marks for 60 hertz and a set of black marks for 50 hertz. I'm in the U.S., so we're 60 hertz electricity. This becomes a strobe. My LED uh, shop lighting is sufficient that it's still actually producing a strobe. And again, I hope, I'm hoping the camera captures this. The shutter rate may not allow it to, as I'm shooting, I think, 60 frames a second. But that ring should appear against a normal lighting like I've got as if, it, if, as if the black band stands still. So I can see a little tiny bit of rotation. So that says the drive speed on this is slightly off. It's not enough. I'm going to attempt to adjust it at this point. Uh, you know, a little bit of tolerance is acceptable. Uh, you, you, you know, a, a, a few RPM fast or slow is typically acceptable. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, that's a good sign. Let's take the power back off. Let's put some bootable media in and see if we can boot from this drive. previous video we created working copies of the media I purchased. We backed that media up, right, protected those backup discs, and then produced an additional set of working copies. Let's see if this guy will boot. Nada. I can see the disc is being engaged and is spinning. We heard it step the heads back. Though it's not trying to read. It's not reading. Not reading track zero, and I'm not sure why. I'm gonna pull the heads back off here. card up and out of the way if I can. Yep, the felt pad is dropping down on. This won't work because the heads are disconnected at this point. But we see it attempting to step the heads back to track zero. So this may be a case I've read this before where if the cable's put on backwards, it'll fry one of the chips. And this may be a case where one of those chips is, is fried. So there's a ULN uh, 2003 or 2008 here. And that's uh, what I'm believing is being used to drive the stepper motors. I believe that's an H bridge driver, but I could be wrong. I think I am wrong. But I'm sure that's what's controlling the stepper motor. Uh, there's two pieces of logic here, or one piece of logic. 74 less 125. There is, this is obviously the read amplifier here. Read or write. I don't recognize that part. It's a CA3146. It's 
So the one part in my bin here that I do have I could replace is that 74 less 125. So while we got it open, so I think I have a 125. Let's give it a shot. Got a few LS 125s there. Let's just go ahead and replace him. It's not going to hurt. You know, our rotational speed seems to be okay. I can see all those leads are highly corroded. Highly corroded, and that may be enough right there to be the problem. So let's sub in a 125. Just for now, I'm going to set the board back in place. Reattach the head so it has a chance of reading the disc. No difference. Well, not totally surprised by that. Let's reseat all the chips. Don't necessarily expect this to make a difference. If we don't get any further with this, uh, it'll be break out the scope and the service manual and start to work through the drive. <clears throat> Again, don't expect this to make a difference, but it's not even attempting to read. Bit of a disappointment, we solved one issue. That didn't solve another one. So, go ahead and put it back together. screw I thought dropped over here. We heard the head stepping, so you know we've got at least some electrical contact here. drive off. I will set this guy aside. Oh, I forgot to put the uh, little RF shield guy back on. drive just to make sure we still have good hardware yep you can hear the head stepping so it's loading yep so guy he's got a really short interface cable and I'm not sure why he's absolutely filthy I believe this one's got the same scraping noise inside yep 
I suspect we're going to have a similar issue. Let's go ahead and tear him down, see what we've got. missing a screw which kind of indicates somebody's probably been inside of it before the same issue where the uh, flywheel is loose on the shaft. See, I'm surprised to not see a set screw of any kind. Oh, that is really stiff. Isolates the drive. Well, there's a reason right there, although I probably just did. Well, no. This is making that wonderful shh noise. Let's see if. No, that's actually nice and tight on there. power and give it a listen. Come on out of our card. so bad. Oh, well the drive speed is obviously wrong. It's just like that the uh, little motor is just running full open. Which is interesting. So that's at least part of the problem. I believe the drive speed adjust is this potential potentiometer right here. Not that I expect this to do anything. Just curious if somebody has gotten in here. motor's just running full bore. And it should be this cable right here. So there's several things. This could be uh, the regulator driving it. This little board right here could be bad. Well, while we're here, I think I will swap this card with the other drive that didn't work just to get a hint if I can swap it because I think it's soldered directly on right there
but we'll take a peek. So there's a washer that just got dropped. Let me screw over on this side that I just about lost. Those are both really long. A couple of spacers on the back side. He is soldered directly onto there, which isn't a big deal. I can unsolder that and move it. Just three leads, orange, black, and brown. The other drive was rotating, appeared to be rotating at a, a, a decent speed. And I believe this card, I mean, it, this is the DC motor that drives the uh, disk speed. Uh, it, I believe it's got feedback. There's, there's four leads that come out of it. I believe it has a feedback mechanism uh, so it can control the speed. It's free running. Which again kind of implies this card. Uh, I think of how I want to do this. If I want to do this, I mean, it's not going to hurt. Muck around here and do this. Release this wire tie just so we get some additional lead length there. Make this easier to work. So the, there's actually markings on the board, BRN, ORG, and BLK, for the three leads. So that helps. So I don't feel too bad tearing this apart here. There's some place I can grip on here and not damage it. cards defective don't know that let me set the other drive up here and we'll remove what we hope is a good card you know if one of the five of these becomes a part drive um, interesting so there's a mechanical difference here. The board is different. It's a different layout. And this may not be as easy a swap as I had hoped. When they do this, Looking at the wiring here versus the color coding here, uh, and they are significantly different. They're different enough I'm not going to be able to do what I thought I was going to do here, and that's a direct swap. That's a shame. You well, know, such is life. we can poke at just out of curiosity go to diode check
I'm seeing what I believe to be a healthy transistor there. Well, that's a shame. Oh, you know what? That's interesting. Did the other car have that? Let me look at the other drive again. So this actually is... Actually is additional, four additional holes here. The uh, drive motors are very different between these. This is much smaller. I don't know that the color coding is identical, although comparing to this one over here, just looking at where I believe power comes in and speed indication comes out, it actually appears to be the same. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. There's two that are bridged here. So the question becomes, can I make that board work on here? Brown, orange, black. And then it's Debating, debating whether to swap the motors around. I can just swap this directly in. Hmm. So one possibility here is to take the motor from this one and swap to this one along with the card and that way the only three leads I have to worry about there's four leads that come up out of the red and yellow and there's really only two leads coming down oh I see what they've done okay this is slowly making more sense the black lead and the blue lead are tied together here. The black lead and the blue lead here are bridged. This really is potentially potentially possible to swap the cars. The problem is, is I don't want to hopefully this is in shot sorry for the wobbly camera don't want to cut the wires on here because this is all solder connections on here this doesn't have the point one pin header ability on it Debating, debating, you know. Quickest way to do this is probably to take the motor along with the card. Let's see how feasible that is. out of there. So it really just should be an unhook three wires here. Black. Blue stays. Orange.
Ultimately, I just want to have four operational drives. You know, three is great. So if I can get a fourth operational drive, by combining these two, I'm, I'm happy with that. Go ahead and release the board. I'm sure this is going to have the same mechanism underneath for spacers. I can see the screw holes look identical. And this has got, again, spacers underneath mounted identically. There's a little bit of metal underneath this transistor that acts as a heat sink. Let's flip the drive over. Remove the belt. Let's see about breaking these two Phillips screws loose. And so there's a fair amount of Loctite to hold those in place. is this whole assembly. We can set this drive out of the way. Move the belt over here. Hopefully I'm doing this somewhat in frame. Let me check the framing here. Yeah, it's not... Got a little bit less room than normal to work with with the Apple II sitting back there. These are a flat. Oh, and they're just honest, honestly just finger tight. So let's go ahead and set mounting screws for this guy aside for a second. Since I don't know if the pitch, thread, etc., on the two motors use the same screws, I will put the original screws into this motor just to set it aside. And we will take the motor we're going to substitute in. Screw holes line up well. Not too shabby. A little bit of torque on those. belt back on him. You can actually see the pinch in the belt here where the belt has set. Not running for a long time. Um, set this card aside. It goes with that motor. Now I've missed them. <laughs> Good cards floating here, right here. Of course it is. Probably easiest to mount that and then tack the wires in place. Actually, I can insert that one after I get this one started.
And so the ground lug here is actually meant to go off the chassis ground, uh, obviously. That wasn't done inside of the Apple Drive. We have three wires to reattach, which are should be brown, orange, black. Hopefully, I can get him through here. I can't. There it goes. Okay. Actually, have a little excessive lead length coming through. Remove. Orange is to the middle lug. best solder joint there. You probably saw how bad that was. Neither's that, but for now, <laughs> it's good enough. Nope, that's a mess. likely working off camera. Let me find a uh, solder back. Come here, you. Let's see if we can clear out the hole in the lug here. Big question in all this is, is this going to work? Transplanted the motor, the belt is on, get the solder back out of the way. speed a little bit fast or slow let's see if we can adjust that so I'm pretty sure it's the screw right here See, if I vary that screw, I, mean, I don't know if, if you're able to see this on camera, but the outer marks are rotating slowly. I'm becoming very stationary here, a little bit more. I've got one of them, I've got the shadow over him. And he's still slowly moving. Let's start to go back the other way. That's not perfect there. But really close, so we should have a good spindle speed there. So that's a good sign, spindle speed's there. Uh, I'm going to step the head in a bit. The head should still step. It's driven off 
different electronics. Uh, and this chip right here. So let's see if we can actually manage to boot. Heard the head step. Yep. You can already hear the head step as it tries to boot. And there it is. So we've successfully taken those two drives. We've replaced a bad uh, spindle motor controller with one from a different drive. Uh, part of doing that was just looking at the, the cabling and the wiring and realizing the color codes were the same. Once I realized that blue and black wire were both connected together as a ground, the six lugs on this card versus the seven on the one that came out makes sense. But we've just successfully booted from this disc, so our head alignment's good enough. Uh, drive doesn't sound bad. And again, there it is booting. Just a very happy little drive at this point. I will uh, actually clean up the soldering that I just did over here a little bit. I'm not going to do that on camera. I'm just going to remove the brown wire, solder back out the hole. Do the same thing I just basically did with the uh, orange wire. Get a little bit better solder joint. Let's try the other disc. Power off. Disc in. Heard the head sort of step back, and I can already see it's loading. You can see the head stepping. Very pleased. Uh, gonna have four drives on my Apple II Plus. Pretty cool. Now I'm gonna wrap this up here. Today is a, it's a holiday. Labor Day, Memorial Day. Boy, talk about old man brain here. I don't remember which. Haven't had any breakfast yet. I'm going to go make some breakfast and uh, come back and finish this up. So uh, if you watched all the way to here, I appreciate it. Uh, and we'll talk soon.